I invite you to now close your eyes as we enter into our time of meditation. Let's just start by breathing. Just a gentle in and out, nothing forced. Just allowing it to flow naturally and smoothly and peacefully. Just allowing yourself to relax and to just feel comfort. Rooting your feet to the earth and just relaxing into your seat or perhaps lying on the floor at home. So today I ask you to go inside, go within yourself to that place where you meet God. That peaceful, undisturbed place where there's nothing but love and peace and protection and power. No one and nothing except for you and for God. I invite you to think about our prayer for protection for a moment. Prayer we end each service with here at the Unity of Madison. It begins with the light of God surrounds us. I ask you now to envision that light of God. What does that look like to you? What does it feel like to you to be surrounded by the light of God? What does it feel like to envision others surrounded by the light of God? The love of God enfolds us. How does the love of God look? How does it feel for yourself and for others? The power of God protects us. Again, how does it look? How does it feel to know that you are protected by the power of God? To know that those around you are also protected by the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. Again, envisioning what it looks like and feels like to be watched over by the presence of God for yourself and for others. And as we prepare to enter into our moment of silence today, I invite you to continue to feel and to envision these things for yourself and for our communities, for our country and for the world. How does it look? How does it feel? 
as we enter into our moment of silence. And as you bring your awareness back to this room, back to this time and this place, we know that the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us. And we can boldly and proudly declare that wherever we are, God is. Namaste. Yeah. Okay. yeah, Pete, for those of you who are online and may not have heard that, Pete was mentioning that Jeffrey James' home base is here, so he kind of travels all around. But either way, we're grateful for his music, though, so thank you very much. All right, so today I wanted to start off by asking, and you don't have to raise your hand, but how many people in here online have tried something that, you, that worked out really well when you were a kid or perhaps a young adult and found out that it didn't work quite as well as you've aged a little bit. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Like, you know, when I was a kid, we had a trampoline, and I'd be all over that thing. I'd be outside doing flips and all kinds of crazy turns. Y'all you know, thought it was funny to bounce people really far up into the air and things like that. Well, I tried that again. It's, it, it hasn't been since I've been here, but it wasn't that long ago. And I was going to show off, you know, I'll go over to somebody's place, they have a trampoline, I'm going to show off. So I'm like, I'm going to show them those types of flips and stuff I can do. Well, it wasn't so cute when I landed on my neck, and I swore, I thought I was paralyzed for a moment. I was like, I can't feel my arms or legs. But anyway, I found out that it didn't quite work the same. Now, I remember having a similar conversation with my mother-in-law, Shirley, not long before, probably about a year or so before she made her transition, but she was in her late 70s at the time of this conversation, and she, she was, she'd been the homecoming queen in high school, and she'd often reminisce with Mindy and I about that time, you know, and how much fun she had and how much that moment meant to her. And she told Mindy and I more than once that she didn't like getting older. She said, I don't like it. I really haven't enjoyed this process at all. And one of the reasons that she gave was she said she really just didn't often feel appreciated anymore. And she told Mindy and I that people treated her, and this were, these were her exact words, but she felt like people treated her as an old fool. And that she felt really saddened by this. And she told us that she may be older than she was, of course, when she was crowned the homecoming queen, but that she still felt exactly like the same person she did the day that crown was placed on her head. And probably most of us can somewhat relate regardless of our age. You know, I may be more wise than I was when I was 18, but really I still feel the same on the inside. A little bit more knowledge, but I still feel the same. And we all look in the mirror at some point and don't necessarily see that 18-year-old face staring back at us. But it doesn't mean that we feel differently on the inside, does it? Maybe we still feel the same. Maybe we still feel 18 on the inside or whatever age. That, that, you know, you can relate back to. Now, Dr. Wayne Dyer talks about something similar in his book, Wishes Fulfilled. Now, he asks a question, and it may be something that we've also asked ourselves at some point or the other. And that question is, who am I? Now, he mentions about how our bodies are constantly changing. You know, our, we cells are constantly dying and sloughing off. New cells are constantly being born and created. And it's just a constant change. And how due to this, the face you see in the mirror tonight will likely not be the same face you see you saw this morning in the mirror just because of the constant change that our bodies are going through. But the part inside, 
The true essence of who it is that we really are doesn't change, right? It's not constantly rebuilding itself every day. It may be growing and learning, but it's still the same. Now, Shirley mentioned how she felt like she, she felt like the same person she'd always been inside. And how in her 70s, she still felt inside like that 18-year-old that she had once been. Now, Dr. Dyer said, It's become absolutely clear that you are not your body. Why? Because the eye has remained, though it continuously sheds the body it occupies. This strange phenomenon of you being an eye that continuously enters, discards, and re-enters a new body has proceeded right up to this very moment. So the question of who am I begins to take a little bit of a different twist, and a little bit of a different turn, because we know at this point that we are not this body. We occupy it, but we are not this body. So to take it further, that would also mean that we really aren't anything physical, right? We're really this changeless being, this changeless, birthless being. And if we're birthless, we're also, as Dr. Dyer states, deathless. Now he talks about the answer to who, about how the answer to who am I can probably be best answered in this way. I am an infinite being who originated not from my parents, but from a source that is itself birthless, deathless, and changeless. So kind of when you think about it, that can be kind of nice because that means that really there's no birthdays, right? So maybe we can be off the hook for buying birthday gifts. <laughs> now, Mindy's not here today. She's coming back from a retreat. But if she were to hear me say that, it probably wouldn't go over very well. So I'm not going to recommend anybody do that. But now, Dr. Dyer, he mentions the word source. So let's talk about source for a minute and what that is. What is this source that he is referring to? And it's probably something that you're familiar with and something you've likely referred to many times. You've probably heard it referred to by other people many times. Remember the opening line from the Tao Te Ching. The Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. So you've likely heard it referred to as the Tao, as God, Jehovah, Allah, divine mind, and many other things, whatever you feel comfortable referring to it as. But all of it points to the same thing, right? It all points to that from which we originated, the source of all life. That source that contains the same creative energy that we originated from. Now, Dr. Dyer mentions the words from a 1967 lecture from initiatic science master Avanov. And Dr. Avanov says, The creator has planted within every creature a fragment of him or herself. We'll say itself. A spark, a spirit of the same nature as itself. And thanks to this spirit, every creature can become a creator. And this means that instead of always waiting for their needs to be satisfied by some external source, Human beings can work inwardly by means of their thought, their will, and their spirit to obtain the nourishing, healing elements they need. This is why the teaching I bring you is of the spirit of the creator and not of matter. So although there's a lot of really good stuff in that passage, let's think about the word spark for a moment. Now, we all know what a spark is. We've all seen a spark before when we're trying to light a fire. A spark is this very quick flash of light, isn't it? It happens within an instant, and then it just appears to be gone, doesn't it? But is this always the case? Is it always gone within that instant? Sometimes a spark can start a fire, right? And I'm not just talking about actual physical fires here when I talk about lighting a fire. What about those tiny sparks of ideas that you get? Those are sparks too, aren't they? The Fillmores, the Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, the co-founders of Unity, they had a tiny spark at one time. And look where we're all sitting now. We probably wouldn't even know each other if they hadn't had that spark. What about the cars we drive? Somebody had to have had a spark of an idea. The light bulb, airplanes, refrigerators, all because someone had a spark. 
So we've got this spark within us, right? And this spark is a spark of God. It is that invisible part within us. It's that invisible part that resides within these bodies. The part of you that is your higher self. And you may be thinking, well, Evan, you know, you just mentioned how a spark is this tiny, quick, sometimes fleeting thing. Does that refer to my higher self also? Is it also this quick, fleeting thing? See, that part is up to you. Just like an idea goes, just like an idea that goes through your head. Like I'm a writer, for instance. I have ideas that constantly are going through my head, these writing prompts. And unfortunately, sometimes they, the most, I think the best ones come to me when I'm in the car driving and I don't have an opportunity to write them down. <laughs> but writing prompts, stories, they're always going through my mind. These are sparks that are coming to me from my higher self. And they can stay that way. They can t- stay just sparks. Or I can actually write them down onto paper and start to give them life start to create a fire out of those sparks. It's really up to me. Our higher self works much the same. It's always there. It's just up to us on how we use it. But trust me when I say it can become huge. And a lot of people in this room probably already know this. A lot of people that are watching us online probably already know this. They know that those sparks can become huge. They can light a fire. And they can light fires big enough that can overtake things such as ego and all that other junk that no longer serves your highest good. Now, Dr. Dyer refers back to Avanov for a minute to another lecture that he gave in January of 1971 where he said, Our higher self is perfect. It's omniscient and almighty. A fragment of God itself. A pure, transparent, luminous quintessence. Now that sounds pretty big to me, right? You say the word quintessence and that's got to be pretty big. That's a huge revelation and it's not just some made up hocus pocus. Remember the verse in in the Bible on John 10 34? Jesus reminds us, is it not written in your law? I said you are God's. And then in Matthew 19 26, Jesus told us with God, All things are possible. Now this stuff was really difficult to wrap my brain around it when I first heard it. I'd had this image of God that, you know, scared me a great deal. And I got to thinking, you know, I'm thinking, okay, if I'm sitting here thinking that I'm God or that I'm this, this much a part of God, what if God's listening and he decides, he, as I had learned, decides to smite me? What am I going to do? This thing knows my thoughts. But you see, that was the problem with the whole thing. I had this humanistic picture of God in my head. This God that was created from humankind. Created in this egotistical image. This God that needed, you know, my adoration or else. You know, you better be constantly worshiping or else. This God that felt it was okay to grant healing to some, but to withhold it from others. Simply because they believed a certain way or not. This God that brings a plague of sorts on some folks simply because they decide to fall in love with someone with a different skin color or someone with the same gender. The God who says, you vote for this specific politician or else. That is a God that is a figment of ego. The God of your higher self is something altogether different. It is, as Dr. Dyer puts it, an all-loving, all-embracing creative source. And there are no exceptions to this rule. So I go back to Jesus because it was Jesus that showed us how to do this. It was Jesus the Christ who beheld this and who demonstrated it for the rest of us. So another Bible verse from Philippians 2, 5 through 6. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery, To be equal with God. So it's all laid out. Jesus laid it all out for us. And let's shift gears for a moment. Because you're probably wondering how. It's all nice to know the the backstory, but how do we do this? Well, we can and we should, of course, study the words of Jesus. He's our master teacher here at Unity. So we ultimately defer to the teachings of Jesus. But we can also break it down even further. 
Let's go back to that, that spark that I mentioned a little while ago. We've all had that spark. We will all continue to have that spark. You may be thinking about one of yours right now. Maybe you had a spark during this, during this talk today. That book that your mind keeps going back to. The one that's inside of you. Just waiting to be ignited. That piece of art. That music that's just begging to be put on paper and manifested out into the world. That app that you want to create. The volunteer idea that keeps coming back to you. The business idea that keeps coming back to you. That person that you need to call. That spiritual path that is beckoning to you. It's all coming from that spark. What if Dr. Dyer hadn't paid attention to his own spark? We'd be standing here talking about something else today and this book wouldn't be sitting here. What is it that your higher self is saying to you? What is the God within asking you, begging you to pay attention to? So I almost quit ministerial school. I almost quit it not once, but twice at least. The first time was because my initial metaphysics instructor, she and I just didn't get along very well. She was asking me to think, which wasn't something I wanted to do at the time. I wanted to just turn to the metaphysical dictionary that Charles Fillmore wrote and find all the answers. And I became increasingly frustrated because this was not what she wanted to see from me. It finally clicked when I found out that she wanted me to go within. And why was that? She wanted me to get into touch with my higher self and to figure out what those medical, metaphysical meanings were to me. Not to Charles Fillmore necessarily. And although she's not watching, I love you, Reverend Carol. <laughs> but while Charles Fillmore's meanings in the metaphysical dictionary, they're a wonderful place to start. That's not what she wanted me to do. Until I finally realized this, I wanted to quit because it was so frustrating to me. Then the second time I wanted to quit because I knew there was no freaking way I was ever going to stand up in front of people to give talks. I couldn't even read reports in front of the class when I was in high school. My knees were shaking, felt like I was going to pass out. But there was no way and no how in my mind until I allowed that spark to grow. And why? That spark within me just wouldn't fizzle. It kept flickering over and over. So when I finally decided I was going to pay attention to it, all along that journey, teachers and mentors began to show up in my life. They begin to help me to pave the path to the road for each step of my journey. And they help me to nourish that spark and to be able to bring it to life. So our sparks can often take on a mind of their own when we allow them to. When we pay attention and we allow them to grow. To enrich our lives in ways that we might have initially never thought possible. All because you took the time to really listen to your higher self. Now, remember last week, I talked about how we always have thoughts. And those thoughts are coming a mile a minute. We did a quick exercise to see who in here could stop their thoughts. And nobody could. Because they're constantly coming a mile a minute. Some of those thoughts serve us really well. And some just absolutely do not. It doesn't mean they're not going to come. But some just don't serve us. That's why it becomes increasingly crucial to pay attention to those that do serve us. And those that don't, just take them and place them right back on that conveyor belt, watch them drift off, and bid them farewell on their journey. Because those thoughts are not from God. Those thoughts are not thoughts from your higher self. So I've mentioned this before, but there's some instances in the Bible where God actually mentions its name. Now in Exodus, Moses asks God what its name is, and it answers back in Exodus 3.13. And God said to Moses, I am that I am. Jesus mentions this again in John 8, 58, when he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Again, referring to this God source as I am. So you see, when you use the words I am to describe yourself, you're also describing God. Would you refer to God as poor? Because that's exactly what you're doing when you say things such as, I am poor. Would you refer to God as weak? 
Because that's exactly what you're doing when you refer to yourself in the way saying, I am weak. That's what you do when you describe yourself in such a way. You are also describing God in such a way. So I want to invite you to do this. And we've talked about before the words we use and how to be mindful of those words. So I want to ask you to continue to do that. But this time, I want to ask you to think about the words you use that follow I am. When you preface I am, think about the words that you use. Think before you say them, do they align with your higher self? Do they align with God? And remind yourself that it takes time. We've all likely had a lifetime of not ending our I am statements in necessarily the most favorable light. I know that I have. It's, a day, it's daily work to think about my I am statements and how I phrase that, how I phrase those words. Maybe we've watched a lot of sparks come and go throughout our lives. Maybe even some of those sparks still flicker from time to time. Perhaps many, many years later, those same sparks from when you were 18 are still flickering now. Remember that there's nothing wrong with claiming your God self, your higher self. Nothing wrong with acknowledging that you are as much a part of God as God is of you. The two are interwoven. When we use one, the word oneness, we're not just talking about how each of us in this room is one. We're also describing that oneness that's with God. So let's rid our minds of this notion of a jealous, vengeful God. And instead, remember that, remember that in God we are love. That God is love. Those sparks that keep flickering. Think about those for a moment. What would happen if you allowed at least one of them to grow? If you allowed at least one of them to not flicker out? To finally, to finally listen to what God, to what your higher self is asking you to do or to be. So I end with the words of Dr. Dyer. Earth's crammed with heaven, and you are earth, filled to overflow with God. So take off your shoes and respect the holy space that is you. Namaste. Okay, and I need to find a piece of paper I have here because I've got an announcement to make about the youth. Ah, here it is.